in the Eric Holder crime syndicate file, the daily file. A lot of days we end up not getting to it because there's so much. I'm glad Breitbart's reporting on this. Breitbart does an overall a great job. I'm not, I'm not saying we scooped him, but reading this, uh, a bunch of publications, including Zero Hedge, Infowars.com, three or four months ago, I know we did articles. In fact, I haven't even looked it up. You guys get Watson on the phone and ask him to pull the articles, the Zero Hedge and ours about this, because this was in plain view. In fact, we even talked about this some in November of last year, because it came out that all these Corzine people, John Corzine people, are in the regulatory positions. And it turned out that, yeah, their payoffs made show that the Justice Department doesn't prosecute them when they rob and steal and insider trade and the rest of it. I mean, this is a mafia, but they happen to be eugenicists. They've created a scientific template for all their raping, robbing, and rapine. But uh, the Chicago Way, Justice for Sale... And it goes on to say in an explosive Newsweek article set to rock official Washington. Why would a Newsweek front the Daily Beast report on this? This is, well, it's just like Fast and Furious. It was already coming out. The government was shipping hand grenades uh, into Mexico, full auto, had Navy SEALs doing it. Sheep dip Navy SEALs, uh, that is supposedly out of the military, but an but in intelligence slash uh, slash contractors so they can so the government can hang them out to dry. U.S. Army Special Forces, Green Berets, Rangers. I mean, that's all come out now. Shipping guns in, killing people, killing people in the U.S., shipping guns to gangs in Illinois, Indiana, Florida, Texas, hang grenades into Mexico, guns into Honduras to control the, gun, the, uh, the drug trade. They then had the Justice Department Come out and have CBS News go, oh, jeepers, creepers, Jiminy Cricket. We did a bad thing. We, we let some guns go out of some gun shops to track them just to see where the guns were going, knowing the bigger news was about to come out. And I think that's what Daily Beast is doing. It's about payoffs. And, of course, they're only reporting on this because Breitbart's reporting on it. They're being forced to, I guess, spin it over to Daily Beast. They're reporting on the fact that there were payoffs to the Justice Department to not prosecute people. So it's, it, it still is very important. In an explosive Newsweek article set to rock official Washington, reporter Peter Boyer and Breitbart contributing editor and Government Accountability Institute President Peter Schweitzer reveal how Attorney General Eric Holder and the Department of Justice are operating under a justice for sale strategy by foregoing criminal prosecutions of Wall Street executives and big financial institutions who just so happen to be clients of the white shoe law firms where Holder and his top D DOJ lieutenants worked. We'll be right back with that information. A little over a year ago, I began to do... All right, I'm going to get back into Eric Holder here in just a moment. But if you go to Infowars.com and click on the top red link that says Breaking News, you get our news feed. So much news goes over the site. That's a key link to click to find all of the day's stories. So much important stuff scrolls off the front page featured news area. There's also the top stories link right next to it uh, in white, and that takes you to our featured reports that we've put out uh, and other trusted news sources that uh, we post as our uh, top stories. We have uh, FBI raids domestic terrorist camp in Florida. They call it domestic terrorist. We're going to be breaking that down. We also have uh, rap video glorifies TSA groping in sexy pat down fantasy. Yeah, it, it, it glorifies uh, being groped and how wonderful it is. Also, a Fullerton, California Police Department to-do list, murder unarmed homeless man. Only eyewitness to Breitbart's death disappears. Oh, but Breitbart was also looking into these reports and now confirming them that uh, the White House uh, crime syndicate, uh, Eric Holder, was being paid off to let Wall Street rob. But they wouldn't kill people over exposing billions of dollars being stolen. I mean, it, there's nothing suspicious. And we should just believe this official story out of hand. And the coroner's dead now, and uh, but it's arsenic. It's I mean that's not a big deal either. You know what? They had that uh, J.T. Reddy guy 
And I'm not saying I'm a fan of all of his politics because he was formerly a white supremacist, but he was a well-spoken person. He was making the system mad, doing open carry. He said people were threatening him. And that's exactly how the Mexican cartels would kill you, is they come in and kill your whole family and then say that you killed him. There was a state senator in Georgia who, was, who had emailed me one week and said, next week I can come on your show. I interviewed her before. We've got proof they're shopping with files, what type of kids they're looking for through CPS to kidnap. The government is, and her and her husband supposedly murder suicide or suicide. I mean, it's all pure bull. Okay, if I get killed, I'm not committing suicide. You got that? Never, never. And whoever comes out and says, I told him, it was like uh, the DC madam. She was being followed, she was being threatened. I told her, you better either dump all the info you have or destroy it and tell whoever's listening to your phones that you're not ever going to talk and just go do your time so they can discredit you or you're dead. And she's like, oh, that's not a big threat, whatever. About a month later, I started talking to sources that were still talking to her. Well, I was talking to her as well, but only a few times briefly. She said she didn't want to come back on. She was done doing interviews. And then a lot of stuff was happening, but I know that uh, she was talking a lot to um, some other investigative journalist out there like Wayne Madsen. And I just called up the condo manager where she owned a condo. And he said, yeah, she was being followed. She was being threatened. She was getting documents to her mother. That handwriting is not hers. And I said, sir, will you send me her uh, lease agreement? I mean, she owned it, but the management agreement for managing the condo area. And he sent it to me. Was not even near the same handwriting. And I published that and handwriting experts said, yeah, no, this is a no-brainer. Wasn't even the same handwriting. So if I get killed or God forbid, and I pray this never happens, if, if anybody ever pulls up at my house and me and my whole family are dead and they say Alex Jones did it, I would literally live a trillion years in hell before I would harm my children, okay, or my wife, okay? I don't have aggressive feelings towards women and children. I have only aggressive feelings towards bullies, and there's nothing like some big six foot four guy thinks he's intimidating me, makes me just want to pull their head off. But I have no violence, zero violence in my heart towards women and children. I would never do that. Because one of their favorite things now is to come to your house and kill you and your family and then blame it on you. As the government loves killing kids and these contractors love it as well. So that's the news on that front. And uh, let me tell you, I think that JT Reddy thing stinks to high heaven, especially all the reports we've got. And then I went and looked up even the Southern Poverty Law Center's demonization of him from three years ago, their big report on him. And it's all these quotes of him saying, they're going to set me up and kill me and make it look like a, you know, a suicide. I know they're coming. I've been death threat. And that's the exact type of calls and stuff I've gotten over the years. If we can make it look like you did it, we're going to cut your head off. You know, stuff like that. And I've just got to go forward. It's like, okay, well, I'm not going to let you enjoy the fear. I could have died driving into work today on the highway. I still do it because I love automobiles and, you know, love transportation and love being free. I put my kids in the car every day. That's the most dangerous thing I could do. So for fighting for liberty, if any of that comes, I don't want it to. And I pray for edge of protection. And I ask all of you to pray for me. But you know what? That's just the way it is. There's no better feeling than just committing. Saying, you know what? I'm not afraid. And I'm coming for you. We're on the march. All right, my friends, we are back live. I'm going to open the phones up here in a moment. The toll-free number to join us on any of the issues I've raised or points you want to bring up is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Look at this article by Kurt Nemo up at Infowars.com. FBI raids domestic terrorist camp in Florida, a raid conducted, see, they're now saying Al-Qaeda is not the threat. They're going to give them Yemen and all these other countries and, and give them Libya. They're the good guys now. It's now the domestic groups. And it's Mexican supremacists, white supremacists, black supremacists that they track. They let out of jail. They have informants set them up. Then they bust them and then tell you how they keep you safe. And, of course, you can pull up the big leader of the white supremacist group that kept causing big, big racial uh, fights in Orlando, it turned out in the news. Orlando Sentinel was a FBI informant who was there stirring them up. They create the groups. 
A raid conducted by federal authorities and local law enforcement in Florida is being used to portray anti-government sentiment as dangerous and potentially violent. We told you this was coming. The FBI raided what it describes as a paramilitary camp in Oskaloosa County, if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Over the weekend, investigators told the media 10 people were arrested on hate crime charges. The suspects are said to be members of the American Front, a white supremacist group, according to WFTV in Orlando. The group is known as a domestic terrorist organization. WFTV learned that the investigators believe the group was involved in paramilitary training, which included weapons like AK-47s. They always call semi-auto Mac 90s that and then say they're illegal when they're not. And they also trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat for a coming race war. Oh my gosh, I guess if somebody trains for hand-to-hand -hand combat down at a local karate or jujitsu outfit, they're terrorists too. So you own a gun, you train for hand-to-hand -hand combat, you're a terrorist. WFTV says the group's uh, figures prominently in a Homeland Security model for assessing U.S. domestic threats and is described by the ADL as a racist skinhead group that is active in several states around the country and probably led by the FBI, just like Hatari was. And of course, they've now been order released because uh, it was all staged, but they've got to find somebody new. Uh, TSA, this is all up at InfoWars.com. These are all InfoWars.com breaking news. TSA releases video of pat-down confrontation with congressmen. Footage shows Texas rep swatting screeners hand away from genitals. They know he's been critical, so they single him out every time and crush his genitals, he said. Uh, and so now they, every time he flies to D.C., they call the police and say, you don't fly unless this happens, and then they grab him. The TSA has released security footage of an incident that occurred two weeks ago in San Antonio International Airport involving congressmen who refused to allow a screener to touch his genitals. The video clips obtained by San Antonio TV uh, station KENS5 show Texas Representative Francisco. Oh, uh, we have it? Okay, so we do have that video. Uh, let's go ahead and play that video right now, and then we'll uh, come back uh, to more news than your phone calls. We begin tonight with exclusive video of the airport pat-down that has sparked a national debate. The IT first broke the story of Congressman Kiko Canseco accusing a TSA agent of assault at the San Antonio airport. Now the I-team has the video first. Investigative reporter Brian New is live with more. Brian? Sarah, we filed an open records request for this video, and now you'll be able to see if the TSA agent assaulted Congressman Conseco or if Conseco assaulted the agent. It happens to thousands of travelers every day, but when Congressman Kiko Conseco was patted down, watch close as he says the TSA agent crossed the line. The congressman pushes the agent's hand away. Watch again. The TSA agent calls for backup. For the next seven minutes, TSA supervisors and San Antonio police officers surround the congressman. Eventually, a different TSA agent pats down Conseco, and he's allowed to catch his flight. The agent